Hello, thank you so much for joining this episode. My name is Jennifer. I am a passionate knitter who lives in St. Louis with my husband, Dustin, and our two Boston Terriers, Franklin and Ellie. Today is gonna to be the first episode in my Muses and Makers series where I want to explore the human experience of creativity and the way that inspiration flows between all of us. So the muses that I would like to feature today are Carmen and Jackie from Knitting a Good Yarn. This podcast started in 2022 and I was lucky enough to catch their first episode, which was hilariously called 0.5. I, it was so indicative of specifically Jackie's personality, but then they had this awesome conversation from Carmen's perspective about how much she appreciated that part of Jackie's perspective. And I think that's really, a lot of what their their podcast shares is that the depth of their friendship, how they're continually discovering each other and evolving as friends, and the appreciation they have of each other in that moment as they're getting to know each other better. They have this beautiful presence about them where they're very open to what their hearts are saying and what their souls are saying, and they're just allowing their bodies and mouths to be conduits of that, and I, I find that very inspirational. So just a little about the title, I'll never knit with Newton in. Um, I'm lucky enough that my partner wants to be involved in this podcast and part of his involvement is coming up with catchy titles for my YouTube videos. He really enjoys clickbaity funniness. And so uh, you're gonna, it's a little clickbaity and I apologize, but I did believe at one point early on this, this podcast with Jackie and Carmen that I would never knit with Newton in. I had never heard of Nudidin prior to their podcast. It wasn't an area of yarn I was necessarily interested in. I am a incredibly process-oriented knitter. And to me, process was color. It was fun stitch textures. It was projects that changed frequently. So I'll make a, you know, a shawl that takes 140 hours and do the whole thing happily because the, the process of making it is so incredibly enjoyable. This idea of these natural fibers hadn't really entered my concept of what I really was, was wanting to look for. The way they described it, it was very diva. Like it was a diva fiber where um, it was easily breakable. You kind of had to be cautious about how you worked with it. The colors were muted, which again was something that I wasn't necessarily drawn to originally. It might shrink or felt if you're not careful how you wash it. So it felt like a hard sell to me at first. However, as I continued to watch Jackie and Carmen and they continued to show me all the beautiful colors of nudin in, I started to become intrigued and I thought, hmm, you know, the subtleness of those colors and the naturalness of those colors just kind of appeals to me. Uh, kind of the way that wildflowers do or like the forest does. I'm a big outdoors person and I really love amateur botany. So I found the nudid in calling to me in a very similar way. Then the way they discussed its tactile nature where it's complex, it's not just squishy, it's not scratchy, it's not anything that's easily describable definitely intrigued me and it started calling to my fingers and then they started showing the makes that they created from this so the first was carmen's fields of gold sweater by isabella clark she did this in this gorgeous creamy white color that just made the stitches stand out so beautifully the sweater looked so beautiful but what looked more beautiful was carmen's feelings about the sweater that she made the joy it gave her, the process of it, and how much she enjoyed every stitch of that process made me think, you know what? That calls to me as a process knitter. It's not even so much that I want the sweater in the end, it's that process of making that really intrigued me. By May 15th of 2023, I had fallen down the rabbit hole and ordered my own yarn. <laughs> From, from the maker of Nuded In. If you go to the down bar, there's a more button. And if you go in there, there's a link to a spreadsheet where I have links to everything that I talk about. The color that I received was called Alchemy, which again, I thought was so funny and so appropriate because this whole process has kind of felt like magic. And Alchemy is, you know, type of magic of changing one thing into another thing. And it made a believer out of me. So that is the change that it created. So I received the yarn on May 15th. I did some, this is a fake swatch because <laughs> really all I was doing was playing with different needle sizes as well as different yarn thicknesses. So I tried playing with it with one strand and 
they weren't I mean it's true it breaks incredibly easy especially with one strand I'm not saying it's impossible but for a beginner new to the knitter it was very difficult um so I I I tried it single stranded on a size one two three four five six a size six needle might have been grocery girls that I saw doing that where you add yarn overs to indicate the needle size but the way that inspiration works right is they might have been inspired for that concept by someone else so who knows where it originally came from I don't if you do please feel free to share then the second one I tried double stranded but of course I stayed I guess I, I stayed with the same number of stitches so it, um, my knitting swatch just grew um, the third swatch there is uh, this it's on a size one two three four five six seven eight so this was on a size eight held double this is on a size eight but held triple and it was starting to get pretty dense and I kind of was really enjoying where we were at. Um, but I thought maybe I'd like it even a little, little less dense, a little less, uh, a little bit more drapey. So this last uh, fake swatch down here is um, three strands of knitted and held together. So I did the three yarn overs here to indicate the three strands. And then it's knit on a 10, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's knit on a nine. So. Once I completed this process, I really felt like I got to know the yarn a lot better and I understood it a lot more because you do, you, you kind of have to get to know this yarn. And I knew that that process of it breaking um, was gonna frustrate me as a first time maker with this yarn. So based on Jackie's and Carmen's suggestion, I decided to hold it double with a mohair uh, a silk mohair and what the silk mohair does is it that the silk is very strong and not very stretchable and so what it does is if you hold that with the nudid in it just makes the process of knitting it for the first time a lot less breaky a lot less a lot easier I still tend to go slow when I'm knitting with it which is not a bad thing for a process knitter right the process of knitting slowly with it I have felt it, it feels incredible for me. I find knitting to be very meditative and very spiritual for me. And the knits that make me slow down and yet still enjoy, enjoy the slowing down are pretty amazing. Once I had this fake swatch, I went back to the, the Magnolia Bloom sweater pattern that um, Jackie had made and decided that that was gonna be my cast on. Keep in mind, I've not made many sweaters. I think I've made three sweaters in my life. Because I'm a process knitter, the endless stockinette kind of um, breaks my soul. And so I'm, and I'm not saying I won't go there again. I completely believe there are times where you need that stockinette, the miles and miles of stockinette. But where I'm at in my season of life, I need engagement. I need engaging stitches. I need something to keep my monkey mind busy so that the rest of me can just enjoy what I'm working on. I'm really intrigued by this concept of inspiration and the muses and who are our muses and how do creative ideas come to us? And then how do we then inspire others? So I really wanted to go back to the original pattern from the original maker and see what inspired her to make that sweater, which then inspired Jackie, who then inspired me. The pattern was created by Camilla Vod. It was published in February, 2021. So on her Instagram, she says that the sweater was inspired by her daughter asking for a cozy sweater. And specifically, she wanted one of the pretty ones, you know, the ones with all the stuff on. And so I just love that, that the pattern was inspired by her daughter wanting that pretty, pretty cozy sweater with all the stuff on it. This sweater does have a lot of stuff on it. It's got lace, it's got baubles, and the fact that I'm knitting it held double with nudid in and mohair, it's it's got a lot going on in, a, in the best way, in the best way. Then Jackie's version, which was inspired by this pattern, and who knows, maybe Jackie's version was inspired by another maker and the chain probably is even longer than I'm, I'm saying here, but just like other versions of, of the Blossom sweater inspired me also, but the one I could pin down was Jackie because I very much remembered that moment. And I'm distracted by this. Do you see this? One of the w wonderful things about Nuded in it is it has these fibers in it. Just There's just a little piece of grass from the sheep where the wool came from. Ugh. 
and it smells so good. It's like just the right amount of sheepy, if you know what I mean. Like, ugh, yeah, that's the stuff right there. Just the right amount of sheepy. So as I was saying, Jackie's version, she also describes it on her project page. And again, I've linked it down below. Um, and I can't do her passage justice because reading it is poetry. In fact, she's incredibly poetic even as she speaks. And it amazes me sometimes how these thoughts can just come out of her mouth full formed. And that's how she describes the idea for this sweater was coming. It was a it arrived to her fully formed. And I find that so relatable because that's often how my muse talks to me is my they'll give me ideas that are fully formed. I know it's my subconscious. I know I'm talking to myself, but that's not how it feels. It feels like I'm aware of this gift that's given to me. So Jackie also says that her project was inspired by a, a quote about a flower in a book that she was reading. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I love where we find inspiration and how so many times our different passions are intertwined with our knitting. Just love it. So now we're gonna go into my version, which was inspired by Jackie's version of the flower sweater that was made by Camilla Vaughn. And again, all the links are down below. So first, my bag. This is a bag of uh, from a collaboration by Le Gar Garcon and Needles at the Ready. Again, muses of mine that I will absolutely bring into a podcast. I was so excited when I got this. This is Kevin and this is Ray or the drawings that were done for them by the guys at Lake Arsenal. And it's just so precious. Isn't that incredible? And not to dwell too much on this, but I just think it again, it, is, it, speak, it speaks to this relationship that we have with each other where a maker inspires other makers who then in turn in, inspire them back. And what an incredible relationship these people have, right? Like it's just very similar to Jackie and Carmen where they get to know each other and we've been watching them get to know each other and it's these beautiful relationships of mutual respect and admiration and it's just it's such a great community that we have here so nuded in comes in plates so here's one plate of alchemy i am knitting it held double so i have two plates here you're going to notice they're not attached to anything when I am done knitting for the day and I'm going to put my project back in the bag, I literally just break my yarn. Watch. Woo. That's how breakable it is. Woo. So it's also incredibly easy to join back. You just do a little spit splicing. I'm going to spare you the spitting, but I'll show you the process. You spit, spit, or you can use a little sponge on your hands and you just go like this. And eventually they join back together and then you just keep knitting with it. It's, it's so easy and so, so elegant and so easy uh, and fun. It's really fun to break it too, right? Like how satisfying is that? And seeing all the little hairs, you can tell I'm having a love affair with nuded in. Just by the way, I look at it and touch it. Ugh, so good. <laughs> so, so those are my two balls of nuded in. Um, I'm in a stash down phase of my life. I have been for five or six years now. I want to be able to kind of purchase the yarn for the pattern that I want to make. And I have not been in that place for, for myself that I have not been in that place just because I had so much yarn that I felt like I wanted to use the yarn I have. I will definitely talk about that a lot more because it's created some it's created some really beautiful knits, but a lot of times it created knits out of necessity, meaning I wanted to use the yarn I already had and it didn't necessarily fit the project or fit the pattern or fit what my vision was for that project or pattern. So lessons learned, um, just from my perspective, I would rather use things that, I would rather buy things for the projects that I'm gonna be making in the future, but I am still stashing down. So one of my incredibly old stash items was this Debbie Bliss mohair silk. Um, I've, I think I purchased this probably in 2008 because I remember going through a bigger commercial phase of purchasing back then um, due to where I was in, in my life and the choices I was making. 
So I was so excited to cast on the nuded in and I wanted to use something that I already had. And this was the only mohair that I had enough of, hopefully enough of, because honestly, I don't think I've even checked the yardage requirements. Um, this is, like I said, this is a love affair. This was so inspired that I feel like I've lost some of my practical choices. Uh, I am usually a little bit more practical with how I'm choosing these things, but I'm in love. I'm in love and we do crazy things when we're in love. So Debbie Bliss is a two ply lace. I'm holding it double. Um, it's 24% silk and 76% mohair. Nuded in is completely unspun and it's 100% wool. Alchemy is uh, primarily a creamy brown color. I would say more creamy than brown, but what's super cool is as you're knitting with it, there's actually pops of orange. I don't know how, but there's, there's a really big pop there of orange. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to try other nuded in and see how different they are as individuals, right? Am I falling in love with an individual or am I falling in love with a group of individuals? I don't know. So this is how far I've gotten on my Magnolia Blossom sweater. I have something like 19 works in progress right now. So I, I cast this on uh, shortly after I received the yarn. I ordered the yarn on May 15th. So I started watching their podcast July 2022, said I will never knit with nudity and you people are crazy. Why would you do that to yourselves? <laughs> By my, May 15th of 2023, I had ordered mine in the color Alchemy. I cast on June 11th and uh, immediately became a patron <laughs> of the maker of that yarn on June 16th. I couldn't help it. I was hooked. I knit all of this between June 11th and June 16th. Have not touched it since because again, I have 19 works in progress and I kind of just work on whatever I'm feeling and whatever I'm most passionate about in the moment. Um, and right now that's the Stephen West sock mystery knit along, which is so much fun for a process knitter. So I'm sure this will get love. I feel like it's gonna fly off the needles. It feels like I'm practically done already. Um, I adore bobbles. I mean, stop. Look how great those bobbles are. The lace pattern on this is ridiculous. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, and it smells so good. It's so sheepy, but not, it's not too sheepy. It's just the right sheepy, right? Ugh. So nice, so beautiful. This mohair is a little prickly. I'm not typically very sensitive to mohair, so hopefully it won't be. An, yeah, I don't think it'll be an issue. It feels okay. It. One of the interesting things about a lot of these fibers is as they warm up on your skin, I find that they get less prickly. My husband has a lot more. Um, he's really good with prickle. Um, really, really good with prickle. He'll request, can I have a prickly sweater? Yeah, <laughs> they're a little tortury to knit, but this was not tortury to knit at all. I really love the way that I never would have picked this. I never would have purchased this lavender mohair to go with this. I mean, I don't, I don't wear lavender. I don't even know why I had it in my stash because again, I think I purchased in 2008. But I am loving this finished result. The way the lavender goes with the, the cream um, and just the way it's marling and oh, I just love it. I just love it. Regarding this sweater, the pattern itself, this neck is incredible. I did go through the process of learning how to cable, not cable cast on. The other cast on that you're all yelling at me right now Jackie Rose does it on the front of Jackie Rose. I'll do an episode on Jackie Rose at some point. But it's, you know, the cast on that looks beautiful as it goes over the top of the sweater. It's in the pattern. You can find it there if you'd like. Just, oh, I just love it. And as you can see, I've kept the mohair going because I don't want to, oh, geez, I don't want to deal with that. Deal with that later. But you can see I've broken the, the nuded in. Um, it's just easy to shove it in the bag that way. And when I go to knit again, I just spit splice it and it's easy peasy to reattach. So yeah, I'm just loving this. Let me see what size needles I'm knitting this on. Doesn't say, I think this is a size 10. There is a link to my project page. I believe Jack, I believe Jackie from knitting a good yarn 
used a 10. I was copying her version of it that is on her project page. So I'm pretty sure I used a 10 as well. I usually use the ones that have, but these don't. These are old and old nitpicks interchangeables that I don't almost, I almost never use them anymore, but it was all I had. And like I said, I was in love and I had to just cast on immediately. So I just grabbed what I had and started. So yeah, I adore the bobbles. Absolutely love the lace. The fabric's amazing. The smell is amazing. The feel is incredible. I just, ugh, I just love it so much. Um, maybe I will finish this sooner rather than later. I wasn't in a hurry. We're in St. Louis and it's in the high 90s right now. So I'm not gonna wear it, but when did that matter to me, right? Like the pattern's great. Um, so this was uh, 11 and a half hours of work so far. I use Knit Companion. Um, so there's a function where it automatically tracks when you have that pattern open on the app. And so at the end, you can see exactly how long you took knitting that. So um, assuming that you had the app open. There are some things I knit where I don't have the app open, like just about all my socks these days. I don't need the pattern, so I just don't have the app open. Um, but all my shawls, all my sweaters, I try to keep the app open just so I understand how long it took me to knit. I, I'm a big tracker, <laughs> I track a lot of different things. So it's not that it's important information, I just like to know that information. Um, I've been using it a little bit to make decisions about the projects I pick. So if I'm gonna pick a five skein Stephen West shawl, I know it's gonna roughly take me 140 hours so that I kind of know the investment that I'm getting into. It, it's never stopped me making anything though. Never, never. Like I go in knowing that there's gonna be a row at the end of the shawl that has a thousand stitches and I still do it anyway. Um, Cause those shawls are so much fun to make. And there will be a Stephen West episode uh, of Makers and Muses obviously as well. So the way this yarn is released is uh, primarily first to patrons. So I did become a, pa a patron of the maker um, because I did fall so hard in love with this yarn. Um, and they've been releasing information about an upcoming August collection on their Instagram. I gotta say, I was not gonna buy any. I was like, absolutely not. You finish the sweater you have, Jennifer. You have no business buying more yarn. And then I saw that one of the colors is this incredible yellow. It's not really golden. It's not really mustard. It's just this incredibly beautiful yellow. And if you remember, one of my other inspirations was Carmen's sweater, which was Fields of Gold. And now I cannot stop thinking about the Fields of Gold sweater in that golden yellow Newton. Not just how gorgeous it would be, but how much fun it would be to knit. So. We'll see where my head is in August, but I could, I could see myself falling down that hole as well. So that wraps up today's episode of Makers and Muses. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you maybe got some inspiration yourself because that is um, the deepest wish of my soul is that I am able to be to others uh, the way these makers are to me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back for more. If you liked this, I please encourage you to like the episode and subscribe if you want more of this content and I hope to see you next time. Take care.